You're listening to ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. Welcome to Hot Topics in Allergy, presented by the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Your host is Dr. Caton Sheff, Medical Director of the Lafayette Allergy and Asthma Clinic in Lafayette, Indiana. Food allergies in American children have increased in the last decade. According to the CDC, 3 million children have food allergies, and hospitalizations have increased fourfold in the last decade. Why are food allergies becoming more prevalent? Joining us to discuss food allergies on the rise in American children is Ms. Amy Branham. Ms. Branham is from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's National Center for Health Statistics, Office of Analysis and Epidemiology, Infant, Child, and Women's Health Statistics Branch. Welcome, Ms. Branham. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, how much have food allergies increased in this study? So over the time periods we looked at from 1997 through 2007, we found an increase of about 18%. Well, 18%, that's a significant statistic. How would you define food allergies? Food allergies and the data that we had available to us were defined as any reported food or digestive allergy in the child in the previous 12 months. So I should note that these data are based on reported food allergy by a parent or proxy. So were they always confirmed by a physician or it's more if the parent thought the child had a food allergy? Right. So unfortunately, we don't have diagnostic confirmation on these reports. However, it should be noted that we have another survey, this National Survey of Children's Health that was done in 2003, which asked about a doctor diagnosis. Still not ideal, but at least it asked about a doctor diagnosis versus a parent or proxy their own ideas of of whether or not this child might have food allergy, and we found very similar estimates, whether it was a doctor diagnosis or a parental report. Can you explain some of the reasons that you found for this increase? Well, again, our data don't allow us to really examine changes in exposures, for example, and obviously these are not longitudinal data, so of course we can't follow the same children over time. However, it's certainly the case that food allergy awareness has increased quite a bit in recent years, and I think that's due to a combination of media information and increases in the media and awareness in parents and awareness in the schools. So it's possible what we're seeing here is an increase in awareness by parents. Perhaps they're getting their children diagnosed more frequently or taking them into the doctor when they do think there are signs and symptoms of a food allergy. In addition, it seems like we are hearing increased cases in the school setting as well. So my suspicion is this may be some combination of increasing awareness and increase in true illness, if you will. What was the severity of some of these allergies in these children under 18? Well, unfortunately, our data won't allow us to examine that as well. So I should state that the data are fairly general that these come from. The strength is that they allow us to make nationally representative estimates of children with reported food allergy. However, other than the question about food allergy itself, we really don't know much about the experiences of these children. So, for example, we don't know what types of foods they are allergic to or how severe their symptoms are. One of the things uh, I'd mentioned at the beginning was that hospitalizations went up fourfold. Does that, you think, link with the increased numbers, or is it more severe in what's going on, or are we under-treating it? How does that number fit with all of this? Sure. So I think, again, it could be a combination of things happening. One thing we noted was we looked at all hospitalizations, or I should say hospitalizations that had any diagnosis related to food allergy. So it did not have to be the primary diagnosis. It could have been any of the seven that are listed in the records for the National Hospital Discharge Survey from which these data come from. And what we found was when V codes were introduced, I believe they were introduced around 2000, these are codes that are in addition to sort of the standard ICD-9 codes that are used to diagnose the condition from which the patient came into the hospital for. V codes are used to identify conditions that may be of importance when somebody comes into the hospital for whatever reason. And what we found were a lot of these increases were due to increasing use of V-codes. And that could certainly get back to the increases in prevalence. So children might not be coming into the hospital primarily because of the food allergy, but they more children may have food allergy, and that may be showing up in the V-codes for these diagnoses. 
it's not all glum as we look at the hospitalizations. It may just be the prevalence is higher. That's why we're seeing more people. We're not having more severe reactions, or you really can't sort that out from the data. My impression from the data when we looked at it was that it's not necessarily due to increases in primary diagnoses, which is the good news. The good news is that we're not seeing a lot more hospitalizations due to more severity and disease, probably. I think we might be looking at more increases due to prevalence. Did you find other health concerns linked to these kids who had food allergies? Yes. So one thing the National Health Interview Survey did allow us to examine was coexisting conditions with food allergy. And this is important because I don't think this data have been shown in this way on a national level prior to this report. And what we found were conditions such as asthma and skin allergy or eczema and other respiratory allergies were two to four times higher in these kids with food allergies compared to children without food allergies. Why do you think some of that is? Well, this corroborates what's in the clinical literature from what I've seen, that these children often have these coexisting allergic conditions. And we also know from the clinical literature that children who have food allergies as young children or infants, even though most of them will outgrow those food allergies, unfortunately, they may go on to develop other allergies such as respiratory or seasonal allergies. So I think it just gives a better picture on a national level of how many of these kids have these coexisting allergic conditions. In addition, there's some evidence that children who have food allergy and asthma may be at risk for more severe reactions, both as children and then later on in adulthood, if they do not outgrow their food allergy and have coexisting asthma. So this could be potentially important for that subset of people with food allergy and asthma. Should practitioners out there who see somebody with a food allergy or or perhaps even parents who may be listening who, who have somebody with a food allergy, should they get their children evaluated for asthma or other allergies? It certainly would not hurt. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical doctor, so I certainly could not attest to clinical practice, but it does seem like what we're seeing in the national data show very good evidence for high rates of co-occurrence of these conditions. So if the parent knows the child has a food allergy, it's already been previously diagnosed, it certainly would be worth watching the child for signs and symptoms of other allergies and then getting them tested as needed. Well, in a sense, it's a great reminder that what you had mentioned earlier, that there is certainly a link and an association between the people who have food allergies maybe going on to get asthma and other respiratory allergies. And I think great awareness to make sure that we all know that and patients are out there trying to get this looked at. What are some of the food groups that were the most common allergens? Well, again, in the National Health Interview Survey, we could not look at specific food groups. We do know from other data that only about eight types of foods make up the majority of food allergies, and those include the common foods that we hear most about, such as peanuts, tree nuts, and fish. Other items like soy and wheat and shellfish make up the majority of the food allergies among children and adults with food allergies. So in this survey, were you able to specifically sort out which food allergies they had or it was more whether they had them or not? It was just whether they had them or not. We have another survey, um, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, that is a more clinical survey. It's more inclusive of, of different clinical factors, and they actually did serum IgE levels for, I believe it was four different types of food, and those data have not been released yet, but we do plan on looking at those. So at least we could get some sense of the prevalence of IgE-mediated food allergies to a few specific foods, and those do include peanut and milk, I believe. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Hot Topics in Allergy on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. I'm your host, Dr. Katen Sheth. In joining me today to discuss food allergies on the rise in American children is Ms. Amy Branham from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's National Center for Health Statistics, Office of Analysis and Epidemiology, Infant, Child, and Women's Health Statistics Branch. As you look at some of this data, Ms. Branham, is this data very similar to that of other countries? Well, it's hard to make prevalence estimate comparisons just due to the different numbers of children, obviously. And I also have not seen many studies that have had national prevalence estimates from other countries. So again, it's hard to make comparisons. Now, one thing that I have seen in the literature, in the epidemiologic literature, is increases in in specific food allergies like peanut allergies. So for example, there have been some studies from the UK that have demonstrated increases in peanut allergy, and those were based on population-based studies. So the numbers aren't quite as large and representative as we might like, but I think they were large enough to 
capture a fairly robust increase in food allergy. Are there other countries where peanut allergies are decreasing or is not as much of a problem as they are in the U.S.? So there is some evidence, again, in the clinical or medical literature that there are countries that do not appear to be having the same rates of peanut allergy per se. And I believe one of those countries that have been mentioned include Israel, for example. And one thing I've seen is that children in Israel are exposed to peanut products at a younger age. It's like a, I'm not sure if it's a candy, but it's some type of product that has um, peanuts in it, and they're exposed to those things at a very early age. I'm assuming they're quite prevalent, and they do not appear to have the same rates of peanut allergy as children in other countries. So that's just one example, and again, it's kind of an ecologic example, so we don't know for sure if if that food item is what's really giving these children some kind of protection or if there's something else in their environment that might be protecting them. It's an interesting case. That is a very interesting uh, situation because certainly clinically it's recommended not to introduce peanuts for a number of years here in the U.S., at least by the American Academy of Pediatrics, to at least two or three years depending where you're reading. So that is very interesting and and suggests maybe we need more of these types of studies to figure out where they're coming from. Right, and there's also some evidence that the way the peanuts are cooked could ha- you know could have some influence on that as well. For example, we have a lot of roasted, high roasted, high heat roasted peanuts in America. That's how they're most commonly consumed, and so there could be some differences based on how they're prepared, which could offer some protection. Is there anything in the data that you looked at that suggests some of these children will outgrow their allergies as they get older and mature? Well, what we know from the medical literature is that most of these children will outgrow, particularly the sort of milk and egg type allergies that they may have as young children. And I think what's really missing in the medical literature is what types of children do and do not outgrow these food allergies and what is it about them that sort of characterizes whether or not they'll outgrow these allergies. I think obviously parents would love to know that kind of information. And unfortunately, I think you alluded to previously, we just haven't had the right kind of studies or the ability to really examine the differences in these children and follow them over a long period of time to determine why some children will outgrow these food allergies and some will not. What about adults? Are are they becoming a greater concern, the food allergies in adults, in addition to this dramatic increase in kids? Well, that's a great question. And I think, you know, we were so concerned with focusing on the children for this first report, we haven't even looked at the adults. We certainly do have information for adults in the same survey, and it's something we plan on looking at in the future. I would like to thank my guest from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Ms. Amy Branham. Ms. Branham, thank you very much for being our guest this week on Hot Topics in Allergy. Thank you. You've been listening to Hot Topics in Allergy. This show has been presented by the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. For more information on the ACAAI, please visit acaai.org. For more information about this or any other show, please visit ReachMD.com, which now features on-demand podcasts. Thank you for listening.